Good morning guys, Billy Ray here. Uh, heading off the East Coast Supercharging, got about a two hour ride in front of us. Ugh, it's nerve wracking, I'm nervous because really couldn't test too much on this car as I went along because of the brake issue. But in the past few weeks, I've probably driven it 35, 40 miles. Not at one shot, but uh, it seems like everything's working. I still have a check engine light for that misfire, but that could be tune related. Wish me luck. Uh, depending how the drive's going, I'll boop in and out, but the goal is just to get it there. I'm not going to be flying, I'm not going to be flooring it, I'm not going to be doing anything exciting. But I'll probably boop in and out and uh, give you updates on how the car's going. Uh, just hope these uh, brakes work good. <laughs> uh, which I, I think they will. Maybe East Coast has something figured out with the brakes? No idea. So anyway, let's get a cold startup going. The neighbors are gonna love this. It's about eight in the morning. Oh, I'm gonna sleep in today. No, not anymore. <laughs> so let it warm up for a second and then uh, start heading out. And uh, I'll pick up with you on the road. All right guys, I'm about 40 minutes into my trip and everything seems to be going good except for that stupid little brake alarm. Pressures are good. Coolant temp is chilling low for some reason. I think that's because of the new radiator and the uh, racing thermostat. I think this thing needs to just get the shit beat out of it in order to uh, keep it at a good temperature. I uh, was chilling in the right lane, just doing like 65, 70. So, so far so good, it rides good. Uh, I have a little thump in the back. I think my trunk might be open, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna get gas or not, but when I do, I'll check it. But that trunk's pretty heavy, it's not going anywhere. So I'm not too concerned with it. Also, one other thing guys, the check engine light has not been around. So I reset the check engine light yesterday and it, uh, hasn't reared its ugly head. Usually when I drive around the block, it uh, comes on after about 10 minutes. So, victory. All right guys, check in with you in a little bit. All right guys, I'm about five, 10 minutes away from East Coast Supercharging. Uh, I left about two hours early so I could, uh, just in case I ran into any issues. So, just pulling over, I'm gonna pop the hood, take a look, see what I got, make sure nothing's leaking, nothing's doing anything funky grab breakfast, and then do our little 10-minute trip. All right, guys, just showed up to East Coast Supercharging. We were event-free getting here, so that's good. Check engine light is still not on, so that's good. Uh, let me go inside and uh, see what we got to do. All right, guys, Tuner was doing his thing, and he just took the car out on the road. I was fumbling getting my camera out, so... He's gonna do a couple rips up the road. We'll probably see him. He's about a quarter mile away and I can still hear him. He, 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 he. That's good. <laughs> I told him about the brake issue. He has no issue driving it. So I told him to test the brakes out before he goes out and feels confident in it. So we'll wait until he does a little uh, drive-by. Here he comes, coming back in. Just, uh, on the, I'm, I'm doing your V table right now. And, mm. uh, idle's a little rich and upper end's a little lean. Nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah, when I started up in the garage, I smelled like gas. I was like, eh. He's doing his computer stuff. He's going on another test run. Yeah, he left about 20 seconds ago and I could still hear him. <laughs> I can't wait for this thing to be friggin' dialed in. Yeah, he's just uh, just programming and dialing in the tune before he throws it on the dyno. So soon we will get some numbers. I think I hear it coming. All 
All right, guys, update. He just went on his third trip, just uh, tweaking the computer up a little bit. Uh, he's been sitting here, and nothing's leaking, so that's good. Did something right. Next portion probably will be on the dyno, and we'll get some numbers. Woo! All right, guys, GTO is on the dyno. Uh, just a quick update. Going to permanently remove the mass airflow sensor. So that is disconnected right now. So we're gonna get all the horsepowers. So I will shut up and I will get to you when this thing starts running. All right guys, we're about to do the first run and we will see what we get. Forgot to put the Y band in, so. Oop. So now we should be getting ready to do this. All right guys, going on our first run here. Uh, I asked Tuner what he thinks this car will make. He's, he's saying like four, four twenty-five, but we'll see. We'll see what the numbers say. I was hoping for more, but who knows? Let's uh, watch some dyno action. My ears are dead. Okay, so that first pull was 377 horsepower and 349 torque. So, let's see if we can bump those numbers up. All right guys, going on to run number two. We will see what this thing does. Hopefully we get a little more horsepower out of it. I would imagine we're doing like three or four runs. never gets old. That is freaking awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we'll go take a peek and see what we got. All right, so that pole got 410 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque. So he doesn't think he's going to get much more power out of that. Uh, he's going to mess with the timing and a little bit of air-fuel ratio and try and get a little more out of it. So we might be looking at like 315 or 415. 415 horsepower so it's gonna do one more pull maybe two but we'll see but this thing sounds ridiculous <laughs> uh gonna see if this is the last pull or not so here we go So much trouble with this thing. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait. All right, I'll get you some numbers. All right, that pole got 421 horsepower and 396 pound feet of torque. He thinks that's going to be about it. He's going to do one more run because he just wants to get two good runs, and then this should wrap it up. All right, guys, on to the last run. Uh, shouldn't see too much improvement, if any at all, so we're just here for the noise. Yeah, I'm gonna be in jail. That pole made 412, so I don't know if he's going to attempt to do something again, but we'll see. All right, guys, he's opting to do one more run, so I guess he had to tweak something. So here we go. ears are absolutely dead this thing's freaking awesome man all right let's see what we got all right last run made 414 that's because the engine's hot so going to wrap this up and i'll get you on the ride home all right guys just got the car off the dyno and 
gonna head back home. Loudmouth 2, which will make it quieter. But uh, yeah, other than that, you do you, boo. And uh, I just wanted to give a big thank you to East Coast Supercharging for tuning my car, namely Doug, who is the tuner there. A uh, real nice guy, very knowledgeable. I mean, he's pretty much tuned everything, you know, GM, Chevy related. So, if you need a dyno to tune, go there. Uh, they're not open on weekends, but he comes in to do tunes on weekends. So, call him up and make an appointment and all that fun stuff. So, let me continue my ride home and I will point out everything that needs to be done to the car still. Uh, just some minor things for the tune and I'll go over that as soon as I get home. All right guys, back in the garage. Uh, I'm just gonna show you what was recommended to me to do to this intake system because there's some restrictions. And apparently the restriction from the mass airflow sensor is worth about eight to 10 horsepower. So that has been tuned completely out. So that's gonna get removed. I'll make a quick video of it, which I'll probably end up doing tomorrow because I'm actually off. And then I'll come out in a couple days, whatever, after this video posts. But uh, just to show you what is going on. So this intake temp sensor, it's sitting on a coolant line. This is the one that goes all the way back to here and goes into, the, I call it the steam port or the crossover, whatever you want to call it. So that is going to get removed and I'm going to try and get this little rubber adapter out and relocate that and just plug that. And then I want to delete this and get a pipe to go from here to here so I can keep my air intake. Or I can just remove this whole thing and just move it over here, which doesn't look like it'll work. So, so at some point I'll be going to a hardware store trying to find a pipe to fit this and just make it the same length as this and button this all up. Also another thing I may consider doing is putting some kind of heat wrap along the intake because the radiator is right here. So. I would imagine heat is transferring over. So I want to try and wrap this whole thing up so we can get optimal performance out of this thing. But overall this whole project, especially the engine side and this, like everything worked great. I've done this stuff like sporadically and individually on, you know, other people's cars here and there over the past, you know, 20 years or so. But uh, yeah, success, nothing leaked. No rods went through the friggin' hood or dropped out the bottom of the engine. Uh, everything worked great. The oil cooler was nice and toasty. The water temperatures were remaining low until started beating on it, which is expected. So I cannot complain. And as far as the brakes go, I think the only other option I could think of is just replace the rear calipers and see if that does anything. Because it's pumping the fluid through, but it's just, nothing's pinching, which is odd. Like, it's coming out at a good pace, too. So that tells me that the fluid's getting there. But maybe when I had them off, something got in there, rusted. I, I don't know. I did push them in before, and they went, but it just doesn't seem to be grabbing. So that's an option I can consider looking into. And I'm also happy with the results we got today. Initially... This engine, before it got rebuilt or anything, like I had it tuned with the cold air intake, the log tube headers, had a stock exhaust, and the itty bitty intake and throttle body. Made about 315 horsepower, and we ultimately maxed out at a 110 horsepower gain, which is friggin' awesome. 
I kind of figured the 425 horsepower to 450 was kind of asking a lot. Maybe if I got this thing bored out and changed the pistons, like potentially could have gotten to that 450 mark, but I think it got to 421.8, so basically 422 horsepower. I will take that all day. But one day we will go faster. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna end the video off right here. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, you know the deal. And I will see you guys in the next one. Pew. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit.